everybody, this is Pastor Ben Lim with The Breaker, where we are believing for your breakthrough in every area of your life. Listen, the Bible says that he is, Paul Parazam, the Lord of the breakthrough. So expect God to break you through into new levels, dimensions, in this show and in this series. Listen, today we have an incredible man of God, Dr. Keenan Bridges. Not only is he featured on ISN, it's Supernatural Network. But he carries such a divine revelation and the wisdom of God. It's such an honor to have you here today, Dr. Keenan. Welcome to our show, The Breaker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ben. You're awesome. I appreciate your, your ministry, your anointing, and I look forward to this opportunity. Thank you so much. Such an honor to have you, sir. And, you know, today, uh, you and I, we're going to talk about discerning the times. Yeah. Because, uh, so many people are in confusion and disarray. They're disappointed, discouraged. And it doesn't matter what's happening on the earth realm. What really matters is what's happening in the eternal realm and what God is doing and saying from the throne. Yeah. So uh, there's so many different words going out right now. There's so much that's happening and taking place. So talk to us, Dr. Keenan. How can we properly discern the times and what time do you believe we are in right now in this season? You know, that's a great question. Um, I'm reminded of First Chronicles uh, chapter 12, beginning with verse 32. It talks about the sons of Issachar, who were men of understanding. They understood the times and the seasons, and they knew what Israel ought to do. And, uh, you know, when we, when we look at the Hebraic understanding of, of the word Issachar, it's a word picture. It, it's it's a it's a, it's like a, a a donkey crouching between two burdens, right? It's uh, donkeys were were used in the ancient world to carry things from one place to another. They were used to carry heavy burdens and to 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 transport from one place to another, and that is the word picture used for Issachar here. That it it's the, the sons of Issachar are not only able to recognize what God is doing, but they are able to carry the burden of the season. They're able to know how Israel ought to respond. They're, 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 they are consistent. They're not easily swayed. They're not easily moved, right? They're, there's a strength uh, that comes with Issachar. And so the Bible says that, you know, we, we, we ought to be like the sons of Issachar, you know, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees, the religious leaders. He said, you can read the weather patterns, but you can't discern the times. And the word times, there is the Greek word kairos. It's, it's the divine moment, you know. And I want to encourage somebody because sometimes when we, when we look at the prophetic, we, we oftentimes focus our energy on the Gregorian calendar. But, but you have to understand that God has a divine timing. He has a kairos. And that's what we have to learn to discern. Jesus functioned in kairos, not chronos. Mm. You know, when when the when the Pharisees would come to kill him, he would say, No, 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 it's not my time. <laughs> you know, and he would keep on walking. He would keep in his assignment. So we have to be like that right now. I believe that this is a time where there is a lot of warfare. But it is, a, it is a time that we have to recognize our weapons. You know, uh, the, the Bible talks about in First Chronicles, I'm sorry, um, uh, Second Chronicles 2020, it talks about, it talks about uh, believe on the Lord your God, so shall you be established, believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. But the Lord said, he said, Kenan, keep reading the verse. And I went down to 2021, ironically, 2021, and 20, verse 2021 says, and the people began to praise God as they were instructed. And it was praise that they use as a weapon mm. to dismantle the enemy. And I think that this is a time of tremendous warfare, but we have to discern our weapons. Mm. We, we are not powerless. We are not victims. We are not people who watch and see what's going to happen. But we have a part to play in the economy of God. And I believe that as we press forward in praise, that the enemy's schemes, his strategies, his lies will, will be dismantled and broken. 
and we will be able to see the victory that God has promised us. Wow, that is incredible, Dr. Kenny. You're, you're already flowing in great revelation and teaching right now, but I love what you said. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of persecution against the church. Even in the United States of America, there's fake news. Mm-hmm. There is a floodgate uh, that's been open of fear yes. and so much confusion right now. But we have weapons, and we need to recognize that even in the midst of the warfare, we need to recognize our weapons because yes. God is saying that you're seated above in heavenly places and realms. So I believe right now there is an awareness that even in the midst of the persecution and the warfare, just like you said, it's still a time for praise. It's right. still a time for great breakthrough. And yeah. I'm believing 2021, which is three times seven, it's a year of triple recompense and triple payback. And we just want to pray that over you right now because I'm believing in this year, 2021, and whatever year you're watching from, God's going to pay you back in full, even in a triple anointing and a triple mantle. God's about to pay you back for everything that the enemy tried to steal, kill, and destroy. But amidst the warfare and the trying, turbulent times, it's a time to praise. It's a time to worship. It's a time to prosper. Mm. Now, I believe, Dr. Keenan, that even in midst of some shaking and in midst of these testings, we should praise God for it because what it's doing is it's purging us, it's pruning us, and yes. it's causing us to prosper. But only those who are able to endure Mm. will prosper. Now, how important do you think it is to continue to endure and persevere, even in the midst of the trials that's taking place? You know, I think it's uh, extremely important at this time to do that. And I also believe that, you know, you talked about the time of testing. The Lord spoke to me back in uh, November, December of 2020, and he talked about he took me to Jeremiah and he talked about the threshing floor. He says that we are in a threshing season. And one of the things that I begin to dig into is what that's all about. So the threshing floor represents the harvest. It represents the separ- the separation from wheat from the from the 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 uh, the wheat from the tear, the wheat from the husk. And so it is this is a, it is a time of separation where we begin to actually experience the harvest. The harvest can't happen without separation. Mm. But the Lord had a play on words there because the threshing instrument, the flail, is the only agricultural instrument that is not only an instrument of agriculture, it's an instrument of war. Mm. The same flail that they used to thresh wheat is the same flail that God is going to use to thresh the enemy. And he's going to thresh the enemies of God to powder. He's going to grind them to powder in recompense of his people. You know, the Lord said to me, uh, Pastor Ben, he said, he said, the presence of your enemy is the evidence of divine promotion. You know, a lot of times we see the enemy and we get frustrated, but you don't, you have to understand that before there could be a parting of the Red Sea, Pharaoh had to manifest. The antagonist always shows up in the story before the hero emerges. And God is saying that the church is about to emerge heroically, valiantly. The church is about to see her strength and God has allowed resistance. He's allowed, he's allowed warfare, but the warfare is not, as you said, to destroy us. It is to refine us. It is to strengthen us. It is to make us stronger and to cause our discernment to become more and more acute, more and more refined. And I believe that this is a very critical moment. I think that we need to pay attention to the next 90 days Mm. because this is going to be a season where the Lord is going to speak very specifically to the church, but we have to have ears to hear what he's saying. We have to be in a position of intimacy. Because the Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them who fear him. And that, that, that fearing of God is not just being afraid of God, but it really deals with friendship. It deals with a reverential friendship. I don't want to, I don't want to compromise my friendship. I don't want to do something that would cause my, my intimacy, my closeness with God to be compromised. 
And so I believe as we continue to posture ourselves, that God's going to speak more and more clearly to us. And, and to be honest, Pastor Ben, I believe, Dr. Ben, this is going to be one of the best seasons that the church has ever seen. I believe that we're going to see the big payback this year. I believe that Romans 12 and 19, where it says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. <laughs> I believe I believe that's going to take place in 2021. We're going to see we're going to see justice come forth like we've never seen. We're going to see we're going to see transference of wealth yes. like we've never seen before. And I believe we're in that time and I think we should be really excited. We should rejoice. Praise God. Well, I'm yes. rejoicing right now cuz uh, not only does it bear witness with my spirit, but this yeah. is the same thing that God has been speaking through us in our ministry. Uh, I'm so concerned right now because in the midst of the warfare and in the midst of battling and going through all of these things, so many people are becoming bitter rather than better. And they're becoming like the world. They're losing their joy, losing hope, losing purity, losing the full focus of Jesus and idolizing certain things. People are backsliding and falling away from the faith. Jesus himself says that many will become cold and lukewarm in these days. Will he find faith on the earth? So my question to you, sir, is how do we stay and abide in the glory and continue to have the right heart in midst of all of these attacks and persecution, censorship against Christians, and all of the warfare that's coming against them? That's a good question. Um, I think, um, you know, Mark chapter 4, verse 24, it says, Take heed what you hear, for what measure you meet it shall be measured to you again. And so words are seeds. Every time we hear something, impregnated in what we hear is a harvest. And so if words are seeds, my ear gates and my heart is the soil. And every time we accept words into our ears, we're accepting seed into our heart and there's a harvest attached with it. So I really feel like God's telling us that we need to guard our hearts, guard our ear gates, our eye gates. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you're listening to because everything you hear can be multiplied mm. you know if 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 we hear for example if we hear words that are doubtful it produces a harvest of unbelief mm. if we if we hear words that are offensive it produces a harvest of anger and dishonor so i really believe like you said we really need to focus on what's important. Fix our eyes on Jesus. The Bible says, looking to Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we have to focus on him. I think that's very important. Yeah, because, Doctor, in the midst of these times, I mean, everything's changing. We know that the gospel, the message, the centrality yeah. of Jesus Christ never changes. But the forms of, of I mean, uh, of how we're worshiping, I mean, even now. Uh, three years ago, people would condemn having online church. And now we see almost everybody's doing online church. Of course, right. our ministry, we still believe in the power of the commandment of assembling. And so we're never going to close our churches down. Uh, but, uh, you know, so now the forms are changing. So I believe in order to be the head and not the tail, to be effective, we need to understand the times. And be ahead of the time. I really love what you said earlier, Dr. Keenan, that prophets and prophetic people, that we not only foretell of what's to come, but we pronounce it, meaning we create it with our words, because our words do create worlds. And I believe we need fresh hope. We need fresh word. We need to have the real rhema, revelation, word of God, because we need to speak it out. Otherwise, the enemy is going to own the narrative. And wow. that's what the enemy wants to do. He's trying to own the whole narrative, all the internet, all of social media, big tech. He's trying to own the narrative. But we know that God is raising up the standard. Mm. I want to talk to you here, Dr. Keenan, because you said it's about the Kairos moment. And, you know, in the midst of the chronos, the chronological time, there's a Kairos 
moment for every single person right now. There's a kairos, meaning right here, right now. How do we discern the kairos moments of God amidst the chronos of all that is happening right now on the earth? You know, um, that's, a, that's a great question. I'll never forget, I was in the Netherlands and I was, you know, preaching and we had to fly out. So it was very dark. It was very, uh, you know, dreary kind of just looked really dark. There were dark clouds, very hazy, you know, like the European winters can be quite dark. So you would think, man, it's just a dark day. The minute we flew out of the immediate atmosphere, the sun was shining so bright. It was not a matter of whether or not the sun was out, but I had to elevate above the clouds in order to see clearly. And I believe that re revelation is elevation. Mm. And one of the things we have to do now, we have to understand that it, it behooves us to elevate our perspective. Everything depends on what vantage point you're looking from. Mm. When you're on the ground, everything looks big. But when you're in the air, everything looks small. The Bible says we're, he, we're seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So God said, I'm going to elevate you to the highest position in the universe, far above principalities and powers. And what happens when we have the wrong perspective, including the wrong prophetic perspective, what ends up happening is that we begin to get our our signaling from the wrong dimension or from the wrong space. So the Bible says that, the, that, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He, he actually is not in hell like people have put him, like he's walking around in a red jumpsuit with horns on. The enemy's in the air. He's in the atmosphere. He's, he's in the atmospheric region, that space, that, that second heaven, if you will. And he's operating there to control the narrative. And what happens is a lot of times as prophetic people, we're, we're, getting, we're getting signals from that realm. And it's not necessarily meant for us to internalize. It's meant for us to take authority over. And the only way we can do that is if we elevate to a higher realm. See, I don't want to hear what's happening in the second heaven. I want to hear what's happening in the throne room. I want to hear the conversation that the Godhead is having about the earth. And I want to eavesdrop. In fact, I don't even have to eavesdrop. I'm, I'm, I'm invited to sit at the table. I have a place in the Father's house. I can hear. That's the beauty of being in, 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 in the Father's house. We can hear the conversations that the Father has at the table. You know, that's the beauty of being a family member. You have access to information that non-family members don't have access to. So I believe this is a time for the church to really recognize who we are and to elevate our perspective. We have to have a victorious mindset because if our, if our theology lacks victory, we're not going to hear God correctly. We're going to skew what he's trying to tell us and we're not going to take the right posture. So I believe in the midst of all of this changing, the church needs to recognize her, her identity and recognize her authority and use it and exercise it in this, in this hour. That is so powerful, doctor, because the enemy wants us to recognize what the devil is doing and Come we're on. pointing fingers at the enemy and at big tech or the world when we should be recognizing who we are and what God wants to do afresh through us. Yeah this season. People of God, we, we want to speak to you that it's not too late for you. Just like Dr. Keenan said, I love that. Revelation causes you to elevate. So the greater the revelation, the greater elevation you begin to ascend up into. And so I believe that God wants to cause you to elevate like never before. Hmm. In the midst of the doom, the gloom, the winter, listen, this is still the beginning of times. And God is far from being done with your life and with this nation. Dr. Kendall, we're talking about discerning the times. And, you know, so many people are in confusion and are in array. And, you know, I love what you said in First Chronicles 12, 32. The Bible says the tribe of Issachar, they knew what God was doing in the heavenlies. And so, therefore, 
it talks about 200 chiefs and all of their relatives under their command. When we understand what God's doing in the skies, we will have authority on the earth realm, which Come means on. that we will be able to operate with heaven's strategies on the earth and be effective in war. Because understanding and discerning the times is a warfare strategy. And that's how you gain victory over the enemy. Now, as we're about to close very soon, Dr. Kinnan, how do we be like the tribe of Issachar? Rather than coming under the second heavens, we operate from the third heavens. And from there, we're connected with the boots on the ground. And we have victory in the battlefields and in the war fields of the earth. Because I believe God wants us to be effective like never before in this new year and season. You know, that's a, it's interesting you, you asked that because the Lord had me meditating on Ephesians chapter six. And I, I want to read something to people because we know about the articles of, of you know, the armor of God, right? We, we know about that. We've read about it many times. But the Lord showed me something that's very profound yet very simple. There's an article of warfare or article of, of, of armor that we don't often talk about. You know, we talk about, uh, uh, for example, you know, the girdle of truth, the, the, the breastplate of righteousness, the gospel shoes, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. But verse 18 actually says, and God showed me that this is actually a part of the armor. Verse 18 it says, praying always mm. with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In other words, prayer is a weapon mm. and we must pray in the spirit. We must live a lifestyle of praying in the spirit because when we pray in the spirit, we are recalibrated. We are recalibrated prophetically. We are recalibrated in our mind. And it sets us back on the right frequency. So I would encourage everyone watching, pray in the Holy Spirit like you never prayed before. If you're eating a sandwich between every bite, praying tongues. If you're going to the drive-thru, praying tongues. Notice I said two restaurants twice. If you, if whatever you're doing, pray in the Spirit because that's going to be the key to what, what Jude tells us, building ourselves up upon our most holy faith, praying in the spirit. This is one of the secret weapons in this hour that we must engage in. My gosh, Dr. Keenan, you know, uh, in our broadcast today on discerning the times, we're really talking about warfare and recognizing spiritual weapons of authority because that's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to be in confusion and to not know how to defeat the plans of the enemy. We already know the victory is ours. But when you discern the Kairos word by praying in the spirit, not only will you be activated in power, not only will you be elevated to a higher realm, but you will have the power to have victory in every area of your life. People of God, we declare over you that you're about to understand the times like the tribe of Issachar, and you're about to gain victory on the earth realm today. Dr. Keenan, I want you to say a quick prayer over to people that we would understand the times that we're in and that we would be happy and be rejoicing because this is a season of favor. It's a season of blessing. And it's a time where God is elevating you to be the head and not the tail. Please go ahead, Dr. Keenan, say a quick word of prayer for us. Father, I pray over every person under the sound of my voice, every person watching all over the world. I pray Ephesians 1, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they would know what is the hope of their calling and the glorious riches of their inheritance in the saints. God, I speak revelation knowledge into every person, that they will begin to flow and operate in their identity in Christ to become everything they were created to be, that they would overcome the lies of the enemy, and walk in total victory in Jesus name. Amen. 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 And amen. Wow. Dr. Keenan, you know, this broadcast was so rich and uh, we just appreciate 
the ministry and the mantle on your life. Sir, I know you have a new book, and I know uh, your, your ministry is just all around the world. It's reaching the nations. Talk to us about your new book very quickly. How can people purchase this new book and find you and follow you and your ministry? Yeah, so my new book, I'll just put it up so people can see it, is Unlocking the Code of the Supernatural. And I'll tell you, if you've ever wondered, um, is there more to the Christian life? Is there more than just attending religious services? But is there something more that God intends for me in the new creation? This is the book for you. You can uh, go to my website, keenanbridges.com, or get the book anywhere books are sold. That's incredible. And people can follow you at keenanbridges.com. Yes. That's incredible. Dr. Kenan, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming today and talking about discerning the times, which is such a crucial, important thing. Thanks for coming on on The Breaker today. We appreciate you, sir. God bless you. Thank you. People of God, Dr. Kenan Bridges, what an incredible man of God who walks in the seven spirits of God. And, uh, you know, we want you to be effective in every season of your life. And we are declaring Psalms 1 over you that this will always be your Kairos Now season of favor. This is Pastor Ben Lim here with The Breaker, where we are expecting God to break through in every area of your life. Thank you for watching. Do like, comment, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.